One Word is a production of BFAC On Air. Welcome back, everyone, to One Word. This is part two of Tradition. I am Dominic. I'm Jenna. <laughs> I'm Zoe. I'm Chloe. And we are the hosts of One Word. One Word. One, word. <laughs> one day, one day it's going to be amazing. It's going to blow your socks yeah. off when we sing it. Yeah, it is going to blow the socks off of all of you one day. Uh, that tradition will indeed pay off. So it was a two week episode. For this one word that is unprecedented in our three months of this podcast. It's true, it's the first time. It really kind of tied the tied everything together uh, as we really kind of got around the entire world with yeah. different traditions. We did, yeah. didn't we? We did. Yeah, we traveled I mean, the world. That yes. If we can't travel the world in in real life, we'll travel the world in our podcast. Yes, <laughs> and we'll bring endeavors. you all along with us. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so it was nice to connect through the entire world in in this this last part two episode of it we talked a lot about food in this yeah episode, we did didn't Some we great yeah. foods that sound just delicious to eat uh, right mm-hmm. yeah yes. um definitely I, did you mean delicious. that when you said it, was, it that way it was partial sarcasm partial <laughs> oh, really. i'm glad you just clarified because i was like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be honest she's talking about figgy pudding she I is think. talking yeah. about figgy pudding let's just Ugh. let's just call it what Ugh. it is right so something I didn't get in in the episode, but I think is interesting for people to know about mm-hmm. the the song and figgy pudding is when that comes from. So that carol, so you know, it, yeah, it, it really first it was a carol from a Merry Christmas, okay. and it is acknowledged as an arrangement in a traditional English song. But the carol is thought to be dated from the 16th or 17th century when the carols would demand refreshments <laughs> like figgy pudding. <laughs> they would demand them as or they else. went around caroling. So that uh, that dates all the way back to the 16th century. <laughs> and we talk about caroling a little bit in the episode and kind yeah. of the history we do. of that. We too. talk about Carol and Jerome. <laughs> Our yep, guest Jerome. stars. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going caroling! Let's go, Carol! <laughs> Oh. They're in a healthy relationship. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this episode it takes us all the way from you know beginning of December all the way through New Year's. Yes, you know all the way through New Year's with Kwanzaa and Hedisa Boxing Kwanzaa. Day. Oh, brilliant! Say that again. Say it again. Hedisa Kwanzaa. Hadiza Kwanzaa. Yeah. Did I say it right? Sure. <laughs> I will keep trying okay. to do it properly because that is important to me. Uh, so uh, I don't think there's any reason for us to keep talking to these people. Dilly we dallying should, no, no more. let's not dilly dally. So without further ado, I just have one word for you: tradition, part two. That was three words. <laughs> So if you remember, very similar to last week's episode with tradition, we're not going to necessarily talk about the definition or the etymology, but we're going to talk about a lot of different types of traditions that happen in December. Um, If Mm -hmm. you do remember from last episode, we talked a lot about poop and, (laughs) you know, nature. uh, And If you missed it, uh, go back an episode and catch (laughs) it because you don't want to miss that. Definitely, definitely. (laughs) You still like that, I do. You? Oh, my gosh. It just tickles me. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, time, we're going to kind of move to European, African, and American type of traditions mm-hmm. that are going on. And I, I'm going to... I'm going to jump in with something that is just the most delicious dessert. <laughs> Can you, I'm, Where are trying, you going with this? I'm trying to make your mouth water okay. and savor. Mm-hmm. Well, all I can think about the, is a Yule log. So. Well, no, no, yeah, it's not. This, this, my friends, 
is figgy pudding. Mm. Mm. Doesn't that just sound so... I've never had figgy pudding. I've never had figgy pudding. I also have never had figgy pudding. You know what? If we were... (laughs) You know what we should have done? We should have all... We should have brought... I should have had figgy pudding delivered here. And we should all have tasted it live. Right? And had a reaction to it. Because now I don't know if it's like, what if it's not delicious to me? Uh, Okay, I I kind of said that. I kind of said it... with a, a bit of sarcasm oh, to it. Because oh, you I don't think it's delicious. It's figs, well, right? I, well, okay, well, I like no, figs. It's not. It's, it's not, not figs. Fig. Well, okay, so why, why is, is it called, called figgy, figgy pudding? pudding? Figgy pudding is really plum pudding. But that's, I like They're plums. not the same fruits, so that's dumb. I'm sorry about <laughs> that. <laughs> Get it together, fruits. Um, but, I mean, <laughs> it's okay. It is, but it is a moist, delicious spice cake, and it does contain figs okay. and walnuts. It's, Wait, a, it's spice a cake. cake. I it's thought not it was even a pudding. A pudding. <laughs> okay, so it. Let me just go into this, <laughs> okay. shall we? Okay. Sorry. 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 Continue. So traditionally, it's a Christmas Day thing. First of all, it takes forever to make. I, I have a recipe hmm. I'll share with you at the yes. end, so you can do it. Right? Okay. It's like the finale to like a proper British Christmas dinner, and the most. The most notable of the, the the references is probably Charles Dickens. Okay, mm. right. Mm-hmm. Of course, the, there's a song now that bring we us some figgy yeah we'll, we might talk about some things about that in a bit. So in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, Mrs. Cratchit is like just working and working to bring this pudding to the table, and she's she's all nervous. Will it? Will it taste good? Will all my work two days and hours on that day of preparation of the of the figgy pudding? And uh, so that's the most popular reference, I think, in um, in literature. So the origins of it, though, they go back to medieval England, so super far back. Mm-hmm. And at that time, it was not a dessert. What was it? No, it, it so it was a method of kind of preserving meats. For the winter months. Okay. Okay. So dried meats and Gross. fruits were, were kept in a pastry bag. Okay. Okay. So, and when you add liquids to it, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> Put this meat in a pastry yep. bag. Now add liquids to when it. When liquids were mm. added to the dried mix, it all kind of expanded. And Ugh. and when it c- was cooked in pies, it fell fed lots and lots of people. It does not getting better. I, that's what, that, <laughs> do you it's understand kind okay. of how I my my your sarcasm? Yes, yeah. my sarcasm there. Mm. So it was a savory dish, and it was not sweet at all. Mm. It would have like beef, mutton, raisins, prunes. Ugh. Wine Yum. and some spices in it. Did it? Did, if has you're it eating better? figgy pudding, <laughs> you're not doing this. Like, oh, let's need... preface this. This is the origin of it oh, back okay. in yeah, medieval okay. times. Okay, okay. those I take poor back my people. Judgment. So it was more like a soup. It was more like a soup than anything else, right? <laughs> you say those <laughs> poor, <laughs> poor people. Those poor people. Well, I mean, they people, had to eat figgy pudding. It was pudding. not. It was. It wasn't a great time to be alive back then, and they had to eat figgy pudding. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a great time to be alive. You had Andy, nights, and day. that's it. Nothing else was good. And they had the plague too. Nights <laughs> and plague. Nights <laughs> and the plague. So by the end of the 14th sec- uh, century, they kind of added other things: breadcrumbs, uh, eggs. Uh, that kind of thing. Some dried fruits. Uh, oh, so so we're kind of getting fruit cake territory. a little. Well, maybe a little sweeter at right, least. Sweeter. So we're getting with that. They got more flavor, and they added some beer. They had some seasoning to yeah. it, and so <laughs> it got a little seasoning. bit thicker. I don't know if that makes it better or not. <laughs> no, <laughs> not yet. We're know. not there yet. We're not quite. <laughs> but the figgy pudding that we know today now has evolved to be more of a bread-like thing. Yeah, okay? give me that bread pudding. Because in England, isn't there like <laughs> pudding is kind of cake? Isn't that like a thing? So, yes. Yeah, so in Victorian England specifically, the the pudding contained less meat with the additions of flour. Right. Uh, sugar, fruits, and spices, Mm -hmm. which is the more delicious Christmas dessert of today. And it is also called plum pudding. Okay. Uh, Okay. 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 Although, you know, as we described in all all of the ingredients, all of them, (laughs) 
not really many plums in it, right. but <laughs> figgy pudding, meaning plum pudding, okay. is, it, it being another name for it. Oof. So it takes two days to make, people. What? Yeah, That's it why. takes it a is. total of two days. So the first day, you put all the ingredients together, you mix it all well, you, you cover it, you refrigerate it, and you leave it overnight. The next day, you kind of grease, grease it all up, you put it in a pan, uh, put the dough in, uh, cover the dough with wax paper, and it sits in a large pan of water and steams for eight hours. <laughs> Yeah. Gotta watch it like is baby. it is it a yeast? Yeah. It's not a yeast bread though, right? Uh, no, I don't believe it's a yeast bread. That's no. so intriguing. Yeah. Do you think they leave it? To, okay, the day before. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I got a specific question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The day before, do they I, like? I probably don't know the answer to the specific question. Oh, okay. <laughs> do they leave it all in the like stuff together so that so that all the ingredients can just kind of like so they get the flavors each other, all kind of just like, like infuse. Combine. Yes. Yes. They have a party. Mm-hmm. They're like, hey, we're all here for yeah. this figgy pudding. Right. Let's well, like chill. Yeah. So are we gonna go in the That's water? That's it. Yep. Okay. So when it's cool, <laughs> it's wrapped in wax paper and put in a pastry bag and stored till Christmas Day. Okay. Mm-hmm. So before you serve the pudding, it's warmed up by the steam method again for two hours. So another two hours. And then you serve it warm and brandy is poured over it and it's lit. On fire? <laughs> yes. yes. Huh? Whoa. And the flaming pudding. Is then <laughs> it's like a ceremony of flaming pudding. Just imagine that I'm going to set the scene for you. So we're in the dining room. Yes. And there's a one of those old fashioned swinging doors to the kitchen. I you know see what it. I mean? I see okay. it. And mom comes backing up to that door, pushes it with her back, and turns around, and the flaming thing is presented to the dining room table. Opa! Opa! (laughs) Then the the swinging kitchen door comes back, hits her, the flaming pudding goes flying, the drapes are set on fire! No kidding. (laughs) So, I wonder if, mm-hmm. sorry, I keep interrupting Dominic. No, no, to, please. That's, that's great. I wonder if that's why the song they're saying, bring us some figgy pudding. They weren't e- excited about the dessert per se, the fire. but more the fire. <laughs> well, no, Maybe. that's very much so because in when you would go caroling, and, and uh, Chloe might talk more about caroling and stuff, but Perhaps. the figgy pudding relationship in that song mm-hmm. is because when you were outside traveling and you were cold and you were singing and you were bringing great joy to people while caroling, you were saying, bring us some figgy pudding because you wanted that oh. hot dessert to come to you. Wow. Right. And now there's also wassailing. Yeah. Which is, I don't know if everybody's heard of wassailing, but it's... Come a wassailing yeah. among the leaves so green. It's mm. like caroling, except that... Okay, so caroling... Okay, it's got a whole story behind it. So caroling dates back to as early as the 13th century, and mm. people... Was there a woman named Carol? I think so. <laughs> Carol. And people didn't even, like, Carol, sing. Carol, let's go sing, Carol. <laughs> Carol, Lynn. Carol, come on. Her I name don't is- want to go sing. Carol? I'm putting on my stockings. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what You go, Carol. Jerome, I'm not you coming. <laughs> Jerome. And then it was called Jeroming. Jeroming. <laughs> and then Jerome. No, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, originally, people wouldn't eat sing. They would kind of just go door to door at Christmas time and just give people their well wishes. Mm. And then That's they were sweet. often thanked by being given, like, wassail, which is a hot, thick, spiced drink, which is kind of a precursor to eggnog. Yeah, okay. so yeah. is it wassail or wassail? I I think it's wassail. I always I, I said wassail. So in choir right now, we're singing it. Yes. And I th- we pronounce it wassail. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's correct. I've heard both. That's the only reason. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I heard yeah. it both It could ways. be just depending on where you're from or, or the, you know. True. Right. But singing wasn't actually associated with caroling until St. Francis of Assisi began incorporating similar well wishes in, in song form during his services, and then people mm. just kind of imitated him and thought that was a nice tradition, so they kept doing it. Oh. Cool. That's, that's great. Yeah. One last thing about the figgy pudding that you would have gotten caroling. You know, last, in part one, we talked a little bit about luck, mm-hmm. right? right? And how they associated certain things with luck. Mm-hmm. So 
there was also an element of that in the figgy pudding. Oh, what now you gonna get? Up. You gonna get good cake or not? <laughs> <laughs> so it, probably not. It was <laughs> very. Pudding. It was very common <laughs> to include something in the pudding for good luck. Kind of like a king cake. The New Orleans king yeah. cake that you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you put silver coins, which would represent wealth for the coming year. A Silver thimble might represent thriftiness. Mm, a, thrifty. a good old wishbone uh, for good luck. Mm. You know, it would just, it would be terrible, right? Uh, <laughs> though if you're eating the figgy pudding and uh, you're choking on that silver it's thimble. <laughs> I'm choking on the silver thimble. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I didn't want to go Carol. Dang it, Carol. <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> Jen is cracking up. <laughs> um, so some traditions around the figgy pudding. So when it was being made, it's a custom to have each member of the household give it a stir oh. and make a wish while stirring it. Oh, cute. Yeah. It, it, it's believed that it should contain 13 ingredients, which is symbolic of Jesus and the disciples. Oh. <laughs> Another custom was that the stirring should be done with a wooden spoon from east to west to remember the three wise men. Mm. Okay, but. Yeah, but what? <laughs> okay. What back then, is this like a, a now tradition, like it has to be with a wooden spoon? Because back then, what were their other options? Was all they had? A stick. I don't know. They, uh, they, they could have Still brought what? out their uh, 24 karat gold spoon. Mm. Right. I guess they did have like metals and they stuff. Had in, metal my head. Tools. in my head, it's very primitive. Like you yeah. only have wood. Yeah. They had metal tools. I yeah. Think. Uh, the brandy was poured over the pudding and set alight represented the love and power of Jesus. So I, I promised you a uh, recipe. Yes. So you have a recipe for us? I have got the 13 ingredients. Wow. Everyone, quick, get your pen and paper get out. Get your pen and paper out. I won't give you the detailed quantities, but these are the 13, okay. uh, 13 things. So you've got the uh, the dried figs, uh, the currants. You've got, I don't even know what that word oh, is. Oh, so nice. Yeah. Yeah. You're the, you're the chef over they're, there. They're, I, yes. They're, um, they're a form of grapes. They're types of grapes. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. cool. Mixed peels, so chopped oranges and lemon peels, breadcrumbs, sugar. What's this one, Jenna? What is what? What's tell us uh, about that suet. one? Suet. Mm -hmm. um, I know. Well, the I know that from the office. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I honestly don't remember what it is, but I know of it. Okay. It's animal fat. It's animal fat. Yeah. No, there we it go. It just came to me. <laughs> a little it's voice like told you little about voice it. Came out. <laughs> Almonds, flour. A, so then there's a teaspoon each of nutmeg, cinnamon, and allspice, eggs, then beer or a stout ale, juice, and finally grated rind. That is, that's the 13 uh, ones. Those are interesting ingredients and, to, and to Chloe put is, together. Chloe is over there just dying <laughs> from something. <laughs> You said beer, and then I went, yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah. And Zoe and I were like, yeah. <laughs> Just no filter here. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Go those, are, those are a lot of interesting ingredients to put Aren't together. They? Yeah. Um, and we're, I'm sorry, were you going to say more about that? No, okay. go ahead. And I one thing that I find interesting, too, is in a couple of the stories we talked about both yesterday and today is the tie back to – like this one, the 13 ingredients were for Jesus and his disciples. Mm -hmm. and, and so like the kind of like where things come from. And I always find that, I mean, with everything we've talked about, I find it interesting, you know, that origin of like where it came from. Yeah. And one thing that I have been, so I am, I'm African-American. We don't celebrate Kwanzaa in my household. We celebrate Christmas, but I know about Kwanzaa. Yeah. Um, and with Kwanzaa, the part of it is uh, lighting something called the Kanara. Yeah. And with the Kanara, like you, you think of the Kanara and you've got candles on there, which is similar to a menorah. Yeah. Right. So I know with uh, Hanukkah, sorry, do you like this path that I just yeah, did? Yeah, I do. I, do. <laughs> I love this. With Hanukkah, the whole, th this is how it kind of relates to what you were saying with the uh, Jesus and disciples. With Hanukkah, it goes back to over 2,000 years ago, a, a miracle that happened. With Hanukkah, kind of how the menorah came about and why it's like eight nights, yeah. right? 
over 2,000 years ago, there was like, you know, a little jar of oil that just happened to burn longer than anybody had expected. Uh, it was this miracle because it was only supposed to uh, last for one night. Mm-hmm. And so through that, that, you know, the people were like, it's, it's a miracle. God had this last for, wh- for as long as we needed type thing. And so, I don't know, I just always find those connections too. Yeah. Like, cause who, you know, like, <laughs> it's like, who would have thought the 13 ingredients from right. the things would relate to Jesus and disciples mm-hmm. or, to or historical, whatever, right? right? To right. historical yeah. things that mm-hmm. occurred years ago. And like, how many years ago that stuff still stays passed down? Mm-hmm. So anyway. Which is I what tradition's it. all about. Which is what tradition is all about. Right, the passing down of... Right, the mm-hmm. passing down. So that kind of leads me to Kwanzaa a little bit. So like I said earlier, I I don't celebrate Kwanzaa, but I know a lot about that mm-hmm. holiday. Because it has to do with, you know, it it has to do somewhat with my past uh, right. and with African Americans. And so I always want to learn more and more about like, okay, what are these... Um, different things that people celebrate, where it came from. Well, that's that's incredibly important yes. to uh, yeah. right. us as a society and humanity to right. have that desire to continually learn about each other and each other's traditions and Definitely. historical right. uh, past. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Kwanzaa is an African-American holiday, or sometimes they call it Pan-African. So it actually wasn't created until like uh, late 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. Um, It it resulted from there were the Watts riots that happened in California. And from there, this doctor was like, you know what? We need something to unite us. Mm -hmm. There's so much division happening right now in the black community. We need something to unite us to bring us back to our past, to our roots. This is what we need something to celebrate. So he started looking at different ideas and different festivals and feasts that happened in, you know, lots of countries in Africa and came up with this idea of Kwanzaa. Kwa- During Kwanzaa, they, like I said, they light something similar to the menorah. They call it the Kanara. And there are seven different candles and they stand for seven different principles. Do you know anything about the principles of Kwanzaa? I don't, but I, I find it interesting that there are seven. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, it's just interesting. I'll talk about something else later, but keep go ahead with the seven principles. All right. So I'm going to tell. I won't go into Cliff for a long time because I can sit here talking forever about it. <laughs> yeah. No. Um. But in in Kwanzaa, what? Well, one of the greetings that you can say for Kwanzaa is "Herize Kwanzaa," which means "Happy Kwanzaa." That fun. Here that is that Kwanzaa. And they use the language Swahili for some of the words and principles. So I'm gonna I'm gonna share some Swahili words all right, with y'all. Please. Okay. Okay. On the first day of Kwanzaa, you celebrate the principle of Umoja. 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 Umoja, Umoja mm-hmm. means unity. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. So with Kwanzaa, they're really trying, like, you know, his whole goal was we want to bring people, we want to bring us all together. We want to remember our past, who we are, and kind of like going forward, what we should do. So Umoja, umoja uh, unity. The next one. Ready? Yes, I'm yes. ready. Kuji yes. Jagulia. <laughs> wow. Kuji <laughs> Jagulia means Kuchy. self-determination. But a be- just beautiful meaning, self-determination. Self-determination, right. right? It's like defining who you are, creating for yourself, speaking for yourself, mm-hmm. right? Three, Ujima. Ujima. Ujima means like a uh, collective work and responsibility, working together with your people. Ujama. Ujama means cooperative economics. So again, kind of supporting each other. And that really goes into building up. So like one of the things with the Watts riots was people were tearing down the things in their own neighborhoods. Oh. Right. So kind of taking away from their community. And this is about building We're up. about building up. Cool. Yep. Um, okay. And then we've got Nia, which Nia. means purpose. Okay. Kuumba, which means creativity. Mm. And Imani, which means faith. Imani. Yeah. So it, Kwanzaa is not a traditional Christian holiday, but if like kind of whatever you believe, whatever you follow, they're like, hey, let's take this and you can still bring have it to it. it. Bring it to it. Yep. Yeah. So it's it's an addition to your religion is yes. what you're saying. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah. Or not, perhaps. Or not. It kind of depends on 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 how you want to how you want to do it. Mm-hmm. Faith in whatever you have faith in. Right. Yep. So uh, what I really like about it, it's it's about you and your community mm-hmm. and 
how you become who you are yeah. in the face yeah. of that community, yes. but working together and being united. Right. Does that sound accurate? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's completely accurate. And, you know, it just became, again, you know, like before the seventies, nobody celebrated Kwanzaa because it wasn't a thing, but, yeah. right. <laughs> uh, but it was still rooted in feasts and festivals and things from um, African communities. And so kind of bringing all that together and, and, you know, being like, we're not going to be divided. We're going to come together and we're going to, we're going to continue on together because we're stronger together that's than we are apart. That's, that's great. Yeah. That's, that Aww. is really beautiful. Teresa yeah. Kwanzaa. <laughs> I like how you, I, I like how you said it, it comes from the feast, the, you know, from the, the yeah. historical things. So I'm going to, I'm going to branch off into a different feast. Yes. Food. Food. <laughs> So, many so food traditions. I don't know if any of you yeah. have heard. Well, y- you know what? Yes, food. Food oh, is man. a lot of traditions, yes. right? The the feeding of oneself, the taking care of others, the feeding of other people. Mm-hmm. Right. That is showing uh, you care. Yes, that's a that's a, a way to show love. And are you hungry? And Eat something. Manja, manja. Eat something, baby. Yes, but, so I uh, I happen to be Italian. So have any of you? I'm just curious. Have you ever heard of the feast of the seven fishes? Uh, I okay. Briefly. Yes, agreed. Yeah. I okay. wouldn't be able to give you a definition, but I have heard of it. Right. Also, so, I thought you were going to say, "Have you ever been Italian?" <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> "No, I have I've never been Italian. So it's typically a Southern Italian tradition. So you can't celebrate this any farther north than Rome. Okay, so don't even right. try. Okay, where are you? Tony are you a Southern Italian? I, I am a Southern yeah. Italian on multiple sides. Uh, so I'm, I'm part Sicilian, I'm part Calabrese, um, and then I'm part Polish. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't think about that part. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, but uh, it's, it's, so it's intensely regional. And so the things you'd find would be different everywhere you went. But some things might be salted cod, shellfish, eel, which is a, a big Ooh. Italian one, squid, conch meat, clams. I would have never connected eel with Italians. I don't know why. Me either. Yeah. 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 Uh, so it's typically on the 24th of the month, and it, it includes a nativity scene and a trip to the church at midnight mass. Mm-hmm. It is served in the early hours of the morning, typically, after midnight mass. Okay. So it's, it's something that's done after mass. At some point during the I- Italian immigration to America, it really started to thrive and become a big tradition here within the Italian-American families as well. So why the seven? Yeah. Right? That's why I is found it, it very right, interesting yeah. that yours... Is was seven, seven two what well. you were talking yeah. about? So there's a couple different reasons why it might be seven. The seven days that God it took God to create the earth, uh, according to Catholic tradition. The seven sacraments of the Roman Catholic Church, right. and the seven famous hills that surround the city of Rome. Huh. So seven was a very interesting number, and, and that's why it's interesting that a tradition. In, in one culture and a mm-hmm. tradition in another culture, both have this rooting of the number seven. Right. That's, what, that's what I found interesting about what you were saying. So that's, that's a little history on the seven fishes and, and what that was in, in Italian tradition. That's cool. And yeah. I just, uh, kind of what you're saying about food, um, like I just love how food, is so important in so many cultures and yeah. really yeah. all cultures, right? Like food, yeah. food is so good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just the different things that are, you know, that come up like seven fishes. Who would have thought seven fishes? Fish? Right. Yeah. Fish? Well, well, Italy you know, being on the coast and whatnot, there was lots of, it was lots Seafood. of fish. And I would have never called it eel fish. Yeah. <laughs> I'd call it an eel. I'd call it an eel. Yeah. 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 No, that's so interesting. Yes. Food. I won't even get into the food of Kwanzaa or well, African American wh- things because, oh, yeah, food. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> so food. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Sorry. what is some what is some traditional food that you have? Um, okay, some traditional food that we would eat. Um I mean, I don't okay. 
we'll kind of call it like more Southern traditional, but also we categorize it as, as soul food. Um, so around the holidays, you know, we might have our turkey. We, might, we are definitely going to have some collard greens, mm. some cornbread, mac and cheese, yams. Mm. Um, what else? Oh, sometimes chitlins. It depends. Do you know what chitlins are? I do. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes chitlins. Uh, it depends. You either like it or you don't. It smells right. nasty um, while it's cooking, but it tastes pretty good. So, <laughs> so I'm going to tell you with me, okay, mm-hmm. don't you bring me a holiday <laughs> without pasta. Oh, my God. Italian. This is, Italian. There, it, it is not a holiday if there is not pasta that's being served to me. Yeah. See, that's <laughs> right. And it's like, it's those things. It's like, because I are there any things that like you got where you're like, we can't have this holiday without this food? Like we, there are any specific foods? My family, every Christmas Eve, we get up in the morning and we bake monkey bread. Oh. And that's, it's a very much just a personal tradition for our family, yeah. not like yeah. anything else. Because I think, I think it started because my mom was like, oh, now that I'm married, I want to have like a new tradition that I start with my family. Mm-hmm. And so we do the monkey bread. Yeah. That's so interesting. Oxtails too. We eat a oh. lot of oxtails. Yeah. And then we put oxtails like in the collard greens. Oh. Yeah. Meal I'll and bring, bring out it some to food. the next time we record. Yeah, yeah that's right. I think we should all bring our Christmas food. Oh my gosh. That'd no, be wouldn't fun. that be fun? Yeah, that would be fun. Sharing Pasta. of the traditions. Yeah. You know, like sharing of the traditions would be great. So we, we kind of talked about a whole bunch of things kind of leading up to December and, and whatnot. But what 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 about after the 25th of December and, and some well, of that? Well, Kwanzaa, you like how I keep coming back to Kwanzaa. Yeah. <laughs> Kwanzaa doesn't start until the 26th. That's great. Yeah. So it goes the 26th till when? Till the 1st. Is it is it a lot? So it's a lot. I had to count on my hands year. just now. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, am I right? Yeah, I'm right. This I'm is right, not I'm a right. math podcast. Oh, there no. is no expectation to. <laughs> <laughs> so Kwanzaa starts on the 26th. Yes. Uh, also, the 26th mm-hmm. is Boxing Day. Boxing Day. So I actually have some information on Boxing Day. Which mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. it's it's really interesting because it's not like with the gloves. Um, it's essentially like the day after, the Friday after Thanksgiving where everyone goes and shopping. It's so like Black Friday. Mm. Um, it's like a major shopping extravaganza. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Boxing Day is so an interesting fact on Boxing Day is it's actually a government mandated holiday. So, but if it falls on like a Saturday or a Sunday that year, they will um, have you take that Monday off. So it's really oh, nice. Just like, yeah, yeah, like it, here, yeah, it, exactly. Um, in England and in Wales, it was actually declared a national holiday, um, and it's been like that since 1871, which is kind of crazy. That's I was going to ask because it's in a couple of different countries, right? It's in England. It's in well, Wales. It's in I think it's in Canada. Australia, yeah, it's in and Canada. New Zealand, yeah. yeah. It's just England. Yeah, and it's it's really cool. It's just I mean essentially like a giant Black Friday where everyone just goes and shops and they do a whole lot of I don't know, stuff for the year. It's really cool. I feel like I had heard that it started with it was for the servants. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Right? So it's it's a day after cuz the servants had to work on the 25th, right? Right. And so on the 26th they got the day off and very often the uh, so the the historical place that this comes from is that the people who worked they worked for Mm -hmm. they would give them boxes to Mm. take off to their celebrations and they were kind of considered christmas bonuses those boxes were considered christmas bonuses and so that's one one offering of what that might be. And the other one is that in the churches, there were boxes all set out, and throughout the month of December, people would come and they'd put their money in the boxes. And then the day after Christmas, the money would be distributed to the poor. And those boxes on the 26th were, were given to them. So that's those are the two possibilities where Boxing Day actually comes from. But most popular is the the one where the servants get the day off mm-hmm. after serving everyone on Christmas day. Yeah. And then their, their bosses would buy that or would give them boxes with things in them. Uh, sometimes money, sometimes food, <laughs> leftover yeah. food yeah. from, from love. Christmas day. I wonder why I didn't like come over to the U S 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'd like another holiday to celebrate. <laughs> yeah, you know, in the U.S., we go we go back to we go back to work the yeah. day after Christmas. They, they do. don't they don't they don't do that there. Boxing Day. Let's yeah. start. Let's let's start it. Well, let's get our government. It, it's yeah, funny you say. Us four. We can start. Just it. us four. <laughs> and us? It's funny. one word. Boxing <laughs> day. <laughs> it's funny you say let's start it because I mean that's where traditions. That's how a tradition becomes a tradition. Someone mm. has to start it. Touche. I had to keep it going. Right, and it's been it's been really great talking about the traditions that we have. And, and where they where they are and where they've been and who knows where our traditions will lead us to as we become you know this more world society hopefully as we we engage with other people and we begin to understand that our traditions are indeed linked like we said at the end of last episode so it's been fantastic. I hope whatever whatever our listeners' traditions are, I hope they can have them with a different light this year. They can see them through the lens of history and through the lens of all of the traditions that that we celebrate. I wish our listeners the very best, whatever that it is that they are doing this December season. Yeah, enjoy. Enjoy the the holidays that are coming. Enjoy your traditions. Have some figgy pudding. Have <laughs> some figgy pudding. Or not. Use that it's recipe. okay. <laughs> you, you can have some fruitcake from our part one episode as well. Yeah. That fruitcake crunch toast, crunch toast from episode part one of tradition. Whatever it is. Let your tradition uh, light up your family's lives this this December season. And I am Dominic. I'm Jenna. I am Zoe. And I'm Chloe. And we are your hosts of One Word. The word for next month is honesty. Oh, honesty. Thank you. <laughs> and have a great one. One Word is a production of BFAC On Air.